Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm here at CES 2014 in Las Vegas, and I'm on the Audi booth, and I'm joined by Marcus Keith. Marcus, thanks for talking to me today. Some really fascinating stuff going on here in the automotive sector, and automotive really seems to be the star of CES this year. Why do you think, why do you think that is? Is it because there's so much going on? Why, why is automotive electronics really at the forefront? Okay, you know, I, I, I'm thinking, um the, um, the importance of what we see right now is the consumer electronics brings a lot of customer value and the life cycle of a car is about seven years. Mm -hmm. we, wanna, we wanna merge both of both worlds together, you know, the best of both worlds, the consumer electronics, which is also customer experience, mm -hmm. and the nice riding. And then we get a lot of consuming and a lot of computing power into our cars. We need that for further development. And therefore it's very important that we now narrow together and really bring up uh, automotive parts where we can use also in our cars. And therefore I think it's really the yeah. hit this year. Yeah, it's really become the star. And, and your, um, your chairman was uh, keynoting packed audience, fascinating presentation, talking about all kinds of stuff that change the driver experience. What kind of, what kind of technology advances are you bringing this year in particular? Oh, especially for us, it's very important to, to get into the next step with the piloted driving. Mm -hmm. Last year we showed on the consumer electronics, uh, the trunk was filled up with electronics, but the car was driving piloted. Yeah, We call it piloted, not autonomous, because still the customer has, uh, the driver has still the the ability to, to get to the steering wheel and drive mm -hmm. by himself. And, and this year, really, what you see behind you actually is a little module. This module is powered by an NVIDIA chip with a high computing power. And again, therefore, it's very important to come bring both worlds yeah. together. And now we are close to serious production. Okay, and how far away do you think driverless or piloted, whatever you want to call it, vehicles are now? I think it's uh, uh, it's depend on the state, really. There's a total different behavior and, and law situation we have in Europe compared to China, compared to the US. In the US, actually, we have the benefit that we are allowed already to get driving. And I really think that within the next two to four years, we can get the first cars on the road. Okay, and when, when you talk about bringing those consumer things and um, the automotive area together, very, very different supply chains, different research and development cycles. You know, this car's been in development for years and years and years. Electronics is changing every six months. Different reliability requirements. How do you bring those challenges together? How do you make that work? Um, we had to break up the uh, supply chain in total. I mean, bringing our behavior, our life cycles uh, into the consumer electronics life cycles. That happened very perfectly, for example, with NVIDIA and also with Google. That's what we see this mm. year in the car. And therefore, we, we came up and speeded that up. The consumer electronics industry had to learn about the automotive. Very cold temperature, mm. high temperature, shaking all the time. Mm. And that's what we right now are trying to bring both worlds together. Yeah, and of course, the stuff that you're providing is absolutely mission critical. If my cell phone doesn't work for half an hour, it's not a problem. If my driverless doesn't, I'm in trouble, I guess. That's right. So different challenges there. And you mentioned Google, you mentioned NVIDIA. You, you're starting to partner with other companies, other electronic companies. Why, why is that? Is that because there's a sense that to really meet these demands, you have to get, get together with other companies? You know, the, uh, the customer experience really comes up with computing power because then we are able to bring very complex uh, technology into our car. Mm. And with high-tech companies like NVIDIA, we are able to bring also that chips into our cars with that computing power. With the, the friends from, from Google, we are able to bring nice applications in our cars and also the, the consumer electronics world, the customer ex experience every day on his Android phone. Yeah. And, and with the Google thing, it's all about connectivity, it's all about that kind of smart car, but for that to operate, it's got to work in a smart environment. And we see it perhaps at other events, all kinds of talk about smart cities. Is there a collaboration between kind of city development, wired, wireless technology in cities and the automotive industry? Um, I would say it's a, it's a very slow starting point, but uh, the political discussions are starting already. We have one demonstration with us this year. It's called the traffic light online uh, demand, there where you can see in your instrument cluster already the traffic lights targeting down in seconds, 25, okay. 24, 23. What I said to the customer, I'm totally relaxed mm. until I see it's going down to eight, seven, six, and so on. Yeah. We combine that with our start-stop system. That means the engine switches back on and three seconds before the light goes on green yeah. and we are ready to take off. Okay. This is just one idea. We showed that in Las Vegas and Las Vegas was able to give us from out of 40 signal lights, 
the, the, the signals to our backend and we bring that signal back to our cars and then the car actually shows up the information. Okay, so it becomes a smart environment as well as the car itself. Last thing I just want to touch on, we're stood by a car here and you're talking about laser lighting. Sounds like a really interesting technology, sounds like something that's, that's really a game changer. Great. Is it unique to Audi? Um, you know, we are forcing the, the new technologies in, in Lightning since more than a decade and we all love it. The entire brand is looking for smart and, and small lights because then we can shape the design yeah. and make it even more attractive. We started uh, with the LED lights, then we brought up, especially last year with our flagship, the A8, the Matrix high beam light, where especially you always drive on high beam, and if somebody is coming against you, we are just switching off that particular segment of the, of the, of the light, and then you have a brightness and safety because you farther see. And with the laser, it even goes two and a half times that far than the regular high beam. And that makes basically it night to the day. Yeah. And Marcus, it must be really satisfying to see the booth as packed as it's been all day. I've hardly been able to get on here. Has that surprised you? No. No? No, no. We, we, we came in here the, the first time four years ago. Uh, the booth was crowded, yeah. Now even it's crowded again. It happens to us every year. Seems like the customers really love us and yeah. uh, we love them. Yeah, so more space next time, fit more people on, show them more vehicles, I guess. Yeah, and it looks like the booth needs to be bigger. Yeah, absolutely. Marcus, thanks so much for your time. It's been a pleasure to talk to you and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you.